Welcome back everyone. In this video, I've got a new setup. Hopefully acoustically, this is much better than the last one. In this video, I want to talk about how Palantir's business really is recession proof and also double click on some technicals headed into our Q1 earnings, which is coming up on May 6th. Definitely check out my other video with all the details on that in case you missed it after this. So in that video, I was going over basically expectations for Q1 and we saw how someone asked, where is this data coming from? This is from FactSet, so a professional source like Bloomberg that I have access to. And basically we saw how Palantir has never really missed a quarter when it comes to their revenue expectations. Now, why is this? It's because they have a very good sense of exactly where they're going to end up every quarter. And they're able to do this because they tend to report sort of later on than most other companies, definitely not towards the beginning. And so they have good visibility into the quarter when they're giving guidance, as well as the business itself lends itself to really nailing expectations with respect to these contracts that renew, they know which ones are going to be carrying forward. They also have a good sense of growth and how a lot of their customers are feeling ultimately. So in this video, what I want to talk about specifically, which I found very interesting when I was discovering this for the first time, is the relationship between government and commercial growth. So what we have here is all of Palantir's quarters laid out with expectations of how the street thought Palantir was gonna do for government and for commercial revenue. And so when you see a red dot, that means Palantir missed expectations. And when you see a green dot, you've seen they've actually beaten expectations. So what we have here is this very interesting dynamic where when one dot is red, the other one is usually green. Red, green, green, red, green, red and so on and so forth. And this is basically the cyclicality of Palantir's business. And the reason I love this so much is if you get to understand the government cyclicality, it's really a lot of the government contracts get signed in around the Q3 area or so. So Q1 and Q2, as well as Q4, tend to be a bit less strong on a relative sense. And what that means is the commercial can sort of pick up the slack where Palantir's government business isn't necessarily as strong. And so we've seen this sort of seasonality to Palantir's government business. But while I'm taking a fundamentals approach to analyzing this stock, some of you are asking, what about the technical indicators? So this video is sponsored by Visual Sectors and they stepped in and helped me out here. Visual Sectors are experts on building tools with data and Wall Street veterans from BlackRock, BNP, and Commerce Bank. Their platform automatically analyzes option flows and shows users whether the overall options market is bearish or bullish on the stock at different points in the future. And you can try them out using the link in the description. The team behind the product is a mix of Wall Street veterans and data scientists, and they regularly publish public predictions in their newsletters and on social media, which you can see. They've calculated that they've had a 82.3% win rate on those predictions so far. So check out Visual Sectors using the link in the description for a totally free seven day trial. And if you decide to sign up, they'll also give you a 40% discount for the first two months. And so here it is, we have Palantir Technologies sentiment analysis on Visual Sectors. Here I am logged in. And basically what we see is the options chain analysis showing strong resistance, strong support. What I really wanna show you today is basically looking at the options chain for May 10th, 2024, which is the first options chain after Palantir's earnings on May 6th. So what do we see here? The main upside target is $25.50 and the main downside target is $20. So I would say that's almost reflecting a bit of a good you know, risk reward or a bit of an asymmetric upside from where Palantir is right now around $21, $22 for investors in terms of expectations on the options market to only expect a fall to $20 and on the upside a rise to 26. That seems uh, good to me. So it seems like smart money is expecting a rise in the stock price. And so I found this very valuable in terms of my understanding of expectations for May 6th. And you also layer in the fact that government business in general has been a bit weaker over past couple years, you know, in 2020, it was super strong. They were doing a lot with the vaccine rollout and everything like that. 
and it, more recently we saw the Titan contract get signed. So there definitely are some interesting projects. But in terms of my expectations for Q1, I think it's going to be a continuation of potentially a bit weaker of a quarter relative to commercial, which I'm going to get to in just a second. But all of this to say that the government business goes in cycles this is why you hear people describe it as pretty lumpy. And so I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. And government revenues, as we know, are very dependable once you have the contracts for the most part. And so on to the commercial, what I'm really seeing here is an explosion of commercial revenues. Now commercial does have a bit of seasonality as well. And you'll see they were sort of struggling in 2022 when the market was down and CEOs and executives were less willing to spend on some of their internal softwares to develop and you know basically spend some of their discretionary profits on benefiting the business. And so I think basically going from where we were in 2022 with some weaker quarters, Palantir has done a great job with the benefit of LLMs and AI in terms of educating their consumers, which are businesses, about how important software is, and specifically software that works, and Palantir software, Foundry, and now AIP, is and how vital it is to the organization and how you'll always hear Alex Karp talk about great software is no longer a luxury, meaning it's no longer a great thing that you that's optional, right? You're not competitive without it. And we're seeing companies that leverage AI and are using AIP really destroy everyone that isn't. And you're able to harness these insights within your business that really make you um, much more competitive and ultimately more profitable. And so I think what we're seeing here is a real explosion in the not only the interest of the product, but the understanding of how important it is to these organizations. And so in terms of the cyclicality for the commercial business, what I really like about it is right now we're in a bull market for Palantir's commercial business. And this is coinciding with a bit of a weaker side of things for Palantir's government business. So not only does the seasonality itself sort of you know have a bit of a yin and yang to it where one's stronger and the other's a little bit weaker but we also have palantir's government business in a bit of a lull and palantir's commercial business is picking up the slack and so that's what i really think is very unique about palantir's offering and what makes it very much recession proof and so looking back in palantir's history in 2022 how did the stock fall from 20 five dollars twenty dollars twenty seven whatever you want to pick as a mark here right about there or there how did it fall from that level where there was a decent understanding of a lot of price action that evaluated that to be a fair price all the way down to five or six dollars how did that happen well it was a series of consecutive eps misses where the floor fell out from under Palantir in terms of their fundamentals. And that was driven by these SPAC write downs of these companies they had invested in basically going to zero and losing all of their equity value. Now, Palantir had made some pretty substantial investments in these companies as part of their strategic plan, which did not end up working out. And as a result, their financials looked horrible over that period of time, but they righted the ship in terms of not continuing this mistake and not doubling down on these investments. And so from that point, from tw from sort of the end of 2022 forward, of course, we had the introduction of AIP in mid-2023, and you're really seeing this incredible resurgence of Palantir's EPS sort of surprise in terms of how they're surprising the market over time. And so I think this is going to continue with this arrow here in terms of what expectations are going forward. And I think Palantir is going to once again, in terms of my prediction, beat expectations for EPS. So I'd love to know what you think about this walkthrough here. And if you're invested in Palantir for the reason of how you know unique and diversified and differentiated its revenues are and what your expectations are for EPS in Q1. Let me know your thoughts. Until next time.